If you watched my video the other day, the Zortrax Inventure unboxing, you'll have realised, and I mentioned, that I wasn't able to fit all of the features in that I wanted to cover for this 3D printer. So we're back today to highlight a few of these features. In the video the other day, I've already loaded in the PETG, so I'm now putting in the support material, Z Support Premium. To load material into this printer, you have to snip the end on a slight angle, wait for the extruder to heat up, and then push the filament through the Bowden tube. Although this printer is a direct drive, it still uses a Bowden tube to guide the filament from the holder to the hot end. Now to finish the setting up, or specifically the platform leveling. This printer uses assisted platform leveling, assisted in that you have to turn the knobs yourself, but the printer tells you exactly what to do. At the start of the process, the printer heats up to mimic the normal printing conditions. The head then moves around and taps each of the outside metal points to check the distance, which is exactly what you can see the printer doing here. After this, the screen will report any adjustments that are required and you can turn away. Once it's checked this and it's happy, the printer will proceed to check the center knob and again report any necessary adjustments. If it's happy, you're all good to go to the next step. Next up, we have the nozzle alignment calibration, which is again another assisted process. Assisted this time in that the printer will print some strips and it then requires you to tell it which ones are the most aligned. It then uses this information to decide the best way to calibrate your two nozzles. At the start, the printer uses that middle square to check the distances between the nozzle heights. This just means it can do a pretty good job of getting those first strips laid down. Personally, I didn't find that there was much to choose from between any of the strips the printer had laid down. However, I still did choose or try to choose the best from the bunch. So that's the main setup done with the bed leveled and the nozzles calibrated and as you can see it was all pretty straightforward so you wouldn't need to be an experienced printer to get this all set up and running. The rest of the options from the menu are all fairly standard, moving the platform, heating the extruder, hot end maintenance, the rest of the tabs you've got material options for changing model and support, models is where the models will appear once they're on the SD card. From the settings tab, you can change the language, change the sort option, adjust the door lock, which is handy if you want to record time lapses like me with the door wide open. And that's pretty much it. Time to do some printing. I use the stock settings to try out this little bearing file. It's the first time I've printed in the Z Support Premium, so I was interested to see what that material was like. It's quite brittle, so I thought I'd just snap off the lion's share of it before using the dissolvable support feature. By the time I'd snapped off the base though, there seemed like so little, I thought I'd just whip out the flush cutters. Old habits die hard. <laughs> The model came out pretty good considering it was using stock settings, but I know that it could be improved and spin more freely with a few tweaks to the settings, so I'll follow up on that in my review video. Now it's time to get the printer working a little bit harder and let's actually test out that support material. One other thing to note is that this printer does have a little support bucket for collecting the changeover materials, which is handy because these otherwise do build up in the machine and can go anywhere and disturb the print. You'll see here they collect in this little bucket and fill up in these little cleaning brushes either side of this box, also 3D printed. In between prints you need to just fasten these back down and empty out that bucket before reinserting into the printer, like so. Now time to get the print off the bed. You can remove the bed, but it does come off pretty easily because it's so nicely leveled. I absolutely love this little scraper. It's gotta be one of the nicest scrapers I've ever used. And believe me, I've got a lot of them. They come with just about every printer. 
The next step, of course, is using the DSS station to dissolve this material. I never like to use more than is needed, so filled the station up with four liters. I set the temperature to 30 degrees C and was a little bit optimistic with a 20 minute initial timer. In the end it took about two hours, but the results, I think you'll agree, are pretty great. Wait and see. The dissolving station has a little propeller at the bottom to spin the water and obviously the lid helps keep the heat in. As the process goes on, the water becomes more and more milk-like in colour as the support material dissolves in it. You can see here, it's getting there, nearly done. Once it's right at the end, you can pick up the brush and remove the last bits with a brush and the tissue. The final stage of the process is disposal of the dissolved solution. I know local councils in my area do accept this sort of waste, but I feel like there's got to be a better way, so I'm going to do a bit more research. For now, I'm just bottling it up. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for, an example print making the most of those dissolvable supports. As you can see here, if you're familiar with FDM printing, this would be a real pain, if not impossible, to print using normal traditional support material. Yet with this process, it really did not take much of my intervention. I'm very impressed and I'm looking forward to doing the review video after a few more weeks of use. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and I will see you next time. Until then, happy printing.